since you already read the title, I just want to say, before we get started, if you don't take kindly to Dragon Ball getting criticized, I just want to let you know this video is not for you. Chapter 441 of Dragon Ball is literally entitled, Videl Battered. And I think this chapter and the events that follow it perfectly encapsulate the sexism and misogyny that is rampant in this story. What happens to Videl in this series, in this franchise, is inexcusable and unapologetically sexist and misogynistic. And I often see people when discussing Dragon Ball say it was a different time, this chapter was released in Japan in 1993. It was not another time. This kind of thing was not acceptable back in the 90s. I don't know what kind of world people who think that are living in. Also, just because something is culturally acceptable in a culture doesn't mean we can't criticize it. At a point in time, the way Sue Storm was written in Western comics as being nothing more than a housewife who read would often smack across the face was considered acceptable. She had almost no agency and was written as always deferring to Reed for every single decision. Over time, we as a people realized this was wrong. And just because something is considered part of some place in culture doesn't make it morally okay in all cases. There are cultures that believe it's okay for men to hit their wives. Cultures that say it's okay to not allow women to go to school. Both of which we can all agree are morally unacceptable. And what happens to Videl is unacceptable. She is savagely beaten by a much stronger, bigger man in order to motivate the male lead, Gohan. Once she has fulfilled her purpose of getting beat up in order to motivate the man, she is completely removed from the story in almost all meaningful regards that has her agency virtually removed. She never gets a chance to get revenge, she never gets a chance to re-enter the story or do anything of use literally ever again, besides for the one time, the fact that she is pregnant is helpful. This is literally the last time Videl will have any agency whatsoever, and it's literally when she gets beat up to motivate a man. Western feminist fans of comic books have coined this situation with the term woman in the refrigerator. The term was officially coined by comic book superstar Gail Simone, who had worked on great books that said Birds of Prey and Batgirl. The term was created into response to a list of growing concern over female characters in comic books being affected by either injury, rape, or being killed or depowered in order to help a male character's arc progress forward, essentially turning these female characters into plot devices. The term that Gail Simone created would use as the name of the website where comic book fans, particularly women, could gather together to discuss why these plot devices were being used so heavily with female characters. The term is specifically referring to an issue of Green Lantern, Green Lantern issue 54 written in 1994, in which the current and only Green Lantern at the time, Kyle Rayner, comes into his apartment to find his girlfriend, Alexandra, had been killed by the villain Major Ford and stuffed into a refrigerator. If you'd be interested in hearing me talk more about the history of the term woman in the refrigerator, I would love to do another video on this. I'm even considering just doing it anyway. But this is exactly what happened to Videl. The unfortunate part is that because this is not a Western comic book, Videl was never able to recover. In fact, one of the points Gail Simone and her colleagues brought up was that a lot of the female characters that are injured or killed off, unlike their male counterparts, were never allowed to return to their previous heroic status or to return to the action afterwards. A great example is that the Joker shattered the spine of the first Batgirl, Barbara Gordon, and she was in a wheelchair for a decade. Videl had it far worse. She was literally beaten to the point that the next time she returned, she had lost entirely all of her agency and almost lost her old personality, instead being reduced to a demure, soft-spoken housewife. There is almost no attempt to explain this transition into this version of the character. It is simply that she was meant to be a love interest for Gohan, and she had to be beaten senselessly to motivate him, and then reduced to being literally nothing more than a housewife and a baby maker. Many people do bring up that this happens all the time in Dragon Ball, but my counterpoint to that is that that's not actually true. Most of the time, the characters that get beat up still get to return on occasion and still get to remain being perceived as cool and maintain their former characterization. There's a difference between Krillin being killed in the King Piccolo arc to serve as Goku's arc and the situation with Videl because Krillin will come back. Krillin gets to play an integral role in the story multiple times after he gets killed in the King Piccolo arc. Videl never returns and even almost immediately afterward has her characterization entirely undone. While post chapter 441 Videl 
well, is still much closer to the character she was pre that chapter. She is still different. After that fight, there is something simply different about Videl. It's small, but you can definitely tell it's there. She feels less like an active player and literally more like she had just become his girlfriend. She even starts somewhat acting like his girlfriend after the fight for literally no reason. And as we move on into super and future Dragon Ball content, she literally becomes the mom or demure housewife. Her feisty tomboy fighter personality is completely gone and she doesn't even fight anymore. And as I said, that's the real difference. The other characters in Dragon Ball that go through these experiences get to come back from it and do future stuff. Hell, Tien even makes an appearance in the Boo arc. Krillin, despite being far weaker than the other characters, gets to continue to play a major role up until the Cell arc. Piccolo is one of the main characters for much of the Boo arc. There are plenty of ways you could have introduced plot devices to allow Videl to get strong enough to fight both of it. You could have kept him around longer and had them have a rematch. There are plenty of things you could have done to avoid the situation. But no, Videl literally just ends up standing around doing nothing and showing up and being Gohan girlfriend. The problem is that in a story like Dragon Ball, there's literally no reason to do this. If the problem is that she's too weak, well, Toriyama's a master in introducing plot devices to make weaker characters strong enough to fight people much stronger than them. Like what he's really good at, and he could have found a way to make Videl strong enough to go fight both of it, to get her revenge. This arc where she trained or gets stronger is how you help her retain her agency. It's actually so bad that Videl doesn't even seem to care about what happened to both of it. She shows no interest in getting payback, a rematch, or revenge. Most other characters, particularly the male characters in this show, would want rematches. They would be angry that they lost. Videl kind of just gets over it and is happy because she's Gohan girlfriend now. She found out her boy boyfriend saved the world from Cell seven years ago. The Boo arc is basically a long, drawn out form of fridging Videl's status. I think what makes it particularly egregious is the anime, where Videl is really set up to be this really cool character, and they spend a lot of time on her characterization and building her up, and she ends up amounting to basically nothing, and it's incredibly disappointing. What makes it so disappointing is that Videl Videl seemed special. She seemed like Toriyama was learning his lesson. Like he wanted to do better and do something cool with a female character. Something he had really never done before. The strongest female character he had ever written was 18. But 18 is never actually allowed to really play a major role in the story. She kind of just uh, beats up Vegeta and ends up having to be a damsel in distress with Cell and then getting absorbed and then she's gone. And she of course also gets to do nothing to Cell who is the male character who harms he doesn't even get to play a role in his defeat after she had been freed from inside of him. Not even in the anime version where everybody starts jumping in the fight to help. 18 doesn't get to show up in the fight and help at all. 18 is literally used in service of the characters of Krillin and Gohan. Gohan who is 11. But Videl seemed like she was going to be important. It seemed like she had a role in the story. Like she was going to be a fighter who actually got to fight. And we were going to see her maybe learn to fight. It really set her up in that way. And then her fight with Boba this happened, and all of that goes out to the wayside to motivate Gohan. Add that on to, as I said, the way the other women in this series are treated. Let's not even get into the misogyny that is everything that happened with Chi Chi. But Videl was fringe, and I think that's really sad because Videl had a lot of potential. I think another thing that makes it so unbelievably uncomfortable and upsetting is just how brutal the beatdown she gets in. Because Dragon Ball really had two types of violence. One, fantasy violence with like really powerful buff guy punching each other while flying in the air or earlier in the series when it was more realistic violence the characters were still drawn very cartoonishly. Videl on the other hand is very much drawn to look like a teenage girl and the violent beatdown she gets is not cartoonish. It is basically entirely hand-to-hand -hand combat, real martial arts, where she is savagely beaten and tortured, and we get to see her teeth get knocked out, and it's clearly something that's supposed to be horrifying. You're supposed to be horrified. 
The problem is that, once again, it's all done to motivate Gohan. And I think what bothered me the most about it is that Toriyama really gets away with it. Fans do not criticize this nearly as often as they should. As I said in the beginning of the video, the fact that Toriyama from Japan had nothing to do with this. Being from Japan doesn't mean Toriyama should get to write incredibly sexist female characters. Being from another country is not an excuse for Toriyama to be a raging misogynist in his writing or in the real world. Now, to be clear, I don't know if Toriyama's a raging misogynist in the real world. I don't think he's a raging misogynist to his wife and his family. I hope he isn't. I hope he's not. I've never met the guy, but I will say, based on his work and his treatment of women, yeah! He seems to be a pretty big raging misogynist to me. And the truth of the matter is, all the incidents that people talked about with female characters in Western comic books are not nearly as bad as this. If a Western comic book writer had tried to publish something like this in that time frame, in like 1994 or 1993, it would not have even been published, and if it was, it would have been destroyed by critics for being overly violent and incredibly misogynistic. But Toriyama often isn't called out on it, and what I really wanted to do was talk about how harmful this chapter is. Because I want to go back to Gail Simone for a moment. Now, I'm not a woman, but it's no secret that people like to see characters that are like them, that represent them. And Gail Simone has a quote when talking about this trope that I think summarizes why it's so problematic. And if a girl is reading something, there should be characters like her in it for her to enjoy. And this was Gail Simone's point. And I quote, If you demolish most of the characters that girls like, then girls aren't gonna read comic books. And I know for a fact that there are plenty of girls that do enjoy Dragon Ball. And I personally feel really bad for them that at the first opportunity in the original theory that they had to have a character, a female character, like Videl with tons of agency, got that all taken away and got fridged right away. I just can't imagine how it must feel to get into something and become a really big fan of it, something like Dragon Ball, and probably be disappointed that there aren't more cool female characters in it. And then you get to, of course, Videl, and then you just lose her almost immediately to misogyny. It shows a lack of regard on the writer's part for the female character. They do not matter to him. And that must suck if you're a female fan. And I think it's more important to criticize the work and complain and say this is a problem so female fans can try to get something they'll enjoy out of it than mindlessly praise Toriyama all the time. It's something worth fighting for because girls should be able to enjoy Dragon Ball 2 and this is the kind of thing that will turn a lot of people away. It's the kind of thing that when you tell a girl that you're into anime and your favorite is Dragon Ball Z, she may turn around and say, oh, you mean the show that had no respect for women? Because Dragon Ball literally turns all the female characters into housewives that are designed to pump out babies. And many people like to say Toriyama is from a different time, but that's not really an excuse. People can grow and change with the times. Just because times were very different when they were kids doesn't mean a ton of old men are telling their granddaughters they should just be housewife one day. No, because there are one of two options. Either they never thought that, or if they did, they've realized that's wrong. They've grown as people because they've learned as we progressed as a society. Toriyama being old shouldn't be an excuse for him to do things like this. We should hold him to the same standard we hold everybody else. I give him a lot of shit, but Toriyama is a really smart man. He is perfectly capable of growing and evolving as a person. And I'm sorry, but by the year of this chapter of release, I think he should have been above this. And even if he wasn't, he had 20 plus years to learn and he didn't. Just look at Videl and Super. It's unfortunate and sad, and I wish he would do better. I may do a video in the future discussing m misogyny in Dragon Ball in further detail, but today I really just wanted to focus on the fridging of Videl and the woman in the refrigerator topic on a very broad scale. But if you enjoyed the video, leave it a like, tell me your thoughts on Videl getting fridged and everything that happened with her in the comment section down below. If you want to support the channel, you can check out my PayPal, which is linked in the description box down below, as is my Twitter if you want to follow me there. If you want more content like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you get notified for more new videos. And above all else, have a great day.